As a shop steward, one of your primary responsibilities is handling grievances. Your approach to grievance handling will depend upon the problem, the persons involved, the contract, the bargaining relationship between the employer and the union, and your relationship with the supervisor. Although grievance handling is more of an art than a science, you will find that a systematic approach does improve your effectiveness. This approach means investigating the problem before proceeding with a grievance and preparing before any meeting with management about the grievance. You are about to see three scenarios that illustrate some of the right ways and some of the wrong ways to handle a grievance. In our first scene, the worker has just been written up again, this time for failing to resupply a packing machine. He brings the problem to his steward. Let's see how the steward handles it. Rick, I've been written up again. Whoa, Jim, let me see. There it is. Oh man, this is outrageous. What'd you do? What did I do? I didn't do anything. I was out there working on my machines as usual. Working two machines, the blame machine broke. I went to fix it, next thing I know he comes around and tells me that the paper ran out in the other machine. It wasn't my fault. Oh man, that's What's outrageous. It? What are you gonna do about it? I wanna go meet with management right now. Well, I, it's not such a good idea, I think, to Why meet not? with management. Well, you know, we should let things settle down a little oh, bit. Oh no, let's get them right now. Let's go tighten up, let's go tighten them up right now. I think what we ought to do is get the business agent in. Let's talk to the business agent, talk to him first. Look. There's no need of talking to the business. That's not the problem. The problem is that we call maintenance and maintenance won't show up to fix the machine. Then I end up getting the blame for it. We need to talk to management. They need to know what's going on out there. Let's not be giving maintenance a hard time. Why? Well, the guys, they deserve it. They, well, get, they should get what they deserve. They get paid good money. They ought to do their work. I, I understand, James, but you know, guys in maintenance are okay, guys. There are members too, you know? So what we ought to do here is focus on management. They, they did something that's absolutely outrageous and unfair, and we're gonna deal with that. We deal well, let's with go it. meet with them. Let's go right now. No, I think what we ought to do right now is call the business agent. Why, I'm not leaving here this day until this is taken care of. James, you got a grievance? If we have to, we'll take it all the way to arbitration. But the way to start here is to call the business agent. That's well, let's go call him right now, because right, we'll I'm not him. leaving here until this gets taken care of. Uh, okay, we'll go call him right now. Okay, let's go. Okay. How effectively did the steward handle the problem? What could he have done differently? The steward has two goals in this situation. First, make sure that the worker knows that the union cares about him and his problem. Second, begin investigating the problem by obtaining as much information from the worker as possible about the problem. This will require using the principles of active listening and the five W's of grievance investigation. Our next scene involves a new steward in the department. He is aggressive but has never filed a grievance. The old steward had the reputation of being too close to the company. The new steward notices a safety problem and immediately heads to the supervisor's office to complain. What do you want? James, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you right now. Well, you don't just burst into my office. I'm asking you for a minute of your time. Okay, what's your problem? We have a health and safety problem. The, the chain guards are off the dough machine. So? It's a health and safety problem. James, we've been through this you're before. But you're talking to the wrong person. Your operators out there are the ones who take them off the machines. We've been through this before. When we didn't take them off, we weren't running. We got rode up. We're running now, and we have a problem. Somebody's going to get hurt. Listen, we allow them to leave them off so that it, it makes it easier for them to take care of jam ups. What do you want me to do? James, you're saying it's easier for them. It's easier for management. It's a violation of the contract and it's a health and safety problem. And if you don't take care of it, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get the machine shut down. Don't be threatening me with that kind of stuff, man. I don't have time for this. James, I'm not threatening you. This is it. What you, do you call it then? If you don't take care of it, I'm going to call OSHA. We're going to have OSHA in and that's it. They'll shut them down. You're going to call OSHA. I'll yeah, tell I'll you, call I, OSHA. I'll tell you what you do. I'll tell you what you do. You quit wasting my time, keep your nose out of my business, and get out of here and go back to work. James, I'm not leaving. Let's go. I don't need you. How effectively did the steward handle the problem? What could he have done differently?
In this situation, the steward is correct. The company is violating the contract. The company's responsibility is to make sure that the equipment is operated safely. But the steward overreacts and is ineffective. Remember, the steward's job is to handle the situation in a way that solves the problem and maintains a good working relationship with the supervisor. In our next scene, there is a problem with who should have worked two hours of overtime at the end of yesterday's first shift. One of the senior workers in the maintenance department believes he should have worked the overtime and brings the problem to his steward. How you doing, James? Hey, James, what's going on? Oh, I got a little problem. You gonna make me work my first day back from vacation? It's not my fault. It never is. What's going on? <laughs> I was bypassed for overtime last night. It looks like we got a grievance possible. I certainly hope so. Let me take some notes here. Okay. Okay, are you still on maintenance, still maintenance? Yes. What shift do you want now? I work day shift. Yes, what? Because you were on nights there for a while when you had that new baby. Yes. Okay, so what happened? Overtime was available for uh, breaking down the divider, tearing down the divider, and I, I wasn't offered it. Okay, at the end of your shift then? It was at the end of the shift, so yes. So it was, um, who was the supervisor who assigned this? That new guy, Ray Parker. Oh, see, I've been on vacation, so I haven't, I haven't met him. I haven't worked with him yet. Well, boy, are you in for a treat. Okay, who did he assign it to? Uh, Tom Clark. Tom Clark. Okay, what exactly was the job? Uh, tearing down the divider. And you were the most senior? Yes. You could do the job? Oh, yeah. How come he didn't give it to you then? Well, you told me this morning it's because he couldn't find me. Where were you? In the bathroom. Until he's new. Oh, yeah. You were, you were able to do that job, right? Oh, yeah. Done it lots of times. Okay. Did he tell you the reason he bypassed you was uh, because he couldn't find you? Yes. So I you, asked him about it this you know, you know that? Yes. Okay. And it's because he just didn't walk in the bathroom, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, I haven't met this Parker yet, so let me see if I can get an appointment with him today. I'll try to get in to see him okay. and see what happened. And uh, you going to work tomorrow? Yes, I'll be here. Same shift? Yes, yeah, same shift. I, 8 o'clock. Okay. Well, I'll be here about quarter till, and let's just plan on meeting here tomorrow. Okay. And I'll tell you what I found out, okay? I'll see you then. All right. All right. Have a good one. Yeah, you do the same. Bye now. Mr. Parker? Before Gene filing Graham, a grievance, she needs to get the supervisor's side Wednesday of the story. Pleasure to meet you, Jean. What can I do for you? Well, I'm here on an uh, overtime bypass in the maintenance department on August 5th. Um, James Rivers was bypassed that night. Uh, I uh, gave Tom Clark uh, the overtime yesterday. Are we talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. I gave Tom Clark two hours of overtime because he was the most senior man that I could find. Well, James was in the bathroom, and uh, if you just walked a few steps, she would have been able to find him. Well, Gene, it's not part of my job to go poking into bathrooms looking for people. Uh, if you're available for work, you're supposed to be on the line at the end of the shift. That's where the work is, and that's where you're supposed to be. And I looked in the maintenance uh, office. He wasn't there. I even looked in the break room. He wasn't there. So I gave uh, Tom Clark the work. He was available. Well, Ray, if you'd been here a while, you'd know that that's, if you want to find some from over time, that's where we go looking for them, because that's where we are. If you want to find us for overtime, you come to the bathroom because that's where you're going to find the workers. Well, Gene, um, you know, I'm not particularly uh, going to get into an argument with you about supervisors poking into bathrooms because the bottom line is James isn't qualified to do the job. What makes you say that? Well, I checked the logs, uh, and James has... Uh, never been qualified to do that job. As far as I can see, he's never done the job. So I wasn't going to give him the job when I have a maintenance guy right there who's available on the floor and can do the job. Well, that explains a lot. Um, your predecessor, Richardson, was a great guy. He was, he was great in scheduling and production, but his, his weak point was his record keeping. He didn't keep accurate records. So what you checked for James was not an accurate reflection of his, his training or his ability. Gene, uh, with no disrespect, uh, I can't go on the basis of what people say, okay? The fact of the matter is I have the logs uh, that Richardson kept, and the logs don't show that James has ever broken down that divider, and Tom Clark is on the logs. He's done the work. So when I couldn't find James and Clark was sitting right there, 
uh, the most senior man who was qualified to do the job. I gave him the job and I followed the contract. May I have a copy of the seniority list you used last night? Uh, yeah, sure. I, you can have this one, I guess. Hey, thanks. And um, a copy of the log sheets that you used on James? I can't give you the log sheet. Uh, it's my only copy, but I'll be glad to make a copy for you. Uh, Hey, uh, can you have them ready by 4.30, my last break this afternoon, I'll stop by? Yeah, okay, I can, I, can, I think you can have it done by then. Okay, and I also need, um, the time cards that you use uh, for James and Tom Clark. I don't have the time cards. You're gonna have to get those from personnel. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, uh, my last break. Thanks. The steward meets with the worker the following day to discuss what her investigation has turned hey, James, up uh, and what they are going this? to do next. You were trained on second shift by Dave Fields. Yes. Okay. The last time you did the job was about three weeks ago when you uh, were signed by Richardson. Yes. Okay, so you've done it on your shift. Yes. Your current shift. And it's about two hours yes. of overtime to tear down. And you're qualified. You were the most senior. Now, I've got a, uh, when Fields comes in this afternoon uh, on second, I'll catch him and before he goes on and verify, you know, your training. And uh, after I get that uh, confirmation from him that, you know, of training, it appears that uh, we do have a grievance. This is a direct violation of Section 4, Paragraph 8, overtime will be awarded to the most senior qualified person. Right. Then the next step, uh, we'll meet uh, with, if I can get in this afternoon, I'll try to get an appointment with Parker, and you and I'll go in and present the grievance to him. Are you going to be, you're going to be around yes, in, the in the maintenance area, department? The department? Right. Okay, I'll come get you. Probably, uh, Fields will be here at two, probably around three o'clock if I can get in to see Parker. Okay. But I want to caution you, this guy's new, and from what I've seen, he's very defensive. Oh, yes. So we're going to have to break him in here, and okay? We can do that. <laughs> and if things get heated, you know, we'll just take a caucus, we'll take a walk, okay? okay. Uh, let me do the talking. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'll see you later this afternoon, about three. Okay. Okay. See you then. All right. Have a good one, brother. Same to you. Let's review what the steward has done to this point. She has interviewed the people who have information about the case, kept detailed notes, obtained copies of relevant documents and records, reviewed her notes, and discussed the case with the worker. Based on the results of her investigation, she decides to grieve the matter and schedules a first step meeting with the supervisor. She is prepared to outline her presentation and can anticipate management's arguments. Lastly, she explains to the worker what to expect in the meeting and what his role will be. Hey James, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, talk to him about the grievance of bypass. Now remember, he is new and he's real defensive. Okay. So if things get heated up in there, you know, let, let me do the talking. The steward and the worker are now ready for the first step, oral presentation of the grievance. They meet with the supervisor in his office. Let's see what happens. Hi Ray. Hi Jean. You know James? James? I know James. How you doing, man? I'm doing fine, Ray. How about yourself? Okay. Uh, I guess. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, Ray, we're here on the um, overtime bypass on August 5th, evening of August 5th, in maintenance. And I, I really don't think I'm going to have to write this up because you inherited uh, inaccurate files from your predecessor, Richardson. And uh, so it wasn't a correct reflection of, of James's ability and training. So um, it's just a real routine overtime bypass and you just need to pay two hours. Well, Gene, I think you're right about not having to um, write it up because the bottom line is that according to the records that I have, James isn't qualified to do this job. There's no evidence that he's qualified to do the jobs and I'm not going to give it to somebody who's not qualified to do the job. That I don't have evidence of that. So That's a problem, Ray. That's what, that's what we talked about yesterday. Richardson didn't keep accurate records, so you can't, you ha don't have a way of knowing. But if you'll ask your own foreman, if you'll talk to Dave Fields on second shift, who trained James, you'll find out that indeed he is qualified, and he is trained, and he was the most senior person working that night. Gene, I took the seniority list, I went down to that line, and I found the most senior qualified person on the line. James was nowhere in sight. I couldn't find him. Even if he is qualified, I couldn't find him. Where were you? He was in the bathroom, where everybody goes at the end of the shift. If you want someone for overtime at the end of their shift, you go into the bathroom, because that's where we are. 
Gene, you're supposed to be on the production line. I don't care what your traditions have been in the past. You're supposed to be on the production line if you're working production. And if you're in maintenance, you're supposed to be on the line you're servicing or someplace where we can find you in case we have to assign you to a job. Now, he wasn't there. That doesn't matter. Bottom line is I have no proof that he's qualified. I have no evidence in the records, and you can tell me what you want about the records being accurate, but I have no way of knowing that. But you do have the ability to find out the facts here. If you'd pick up your telephone and call Dave Fields, second shift foreman, he would tell you he is the man who trained James. He would tell you that James has been trained, he's performed it before, on his shift, on second shift, and he's performed it three weeks ago on first shift. James, you say you're qualified to do this job? Yes, I am. When did you get qualified? About two months ago. All right, when did you do it last? Oh, about three weeks ago for Richardson. For Richardson? Yes. All right, here's the deal I'll offer you. You say you're qualified? Next time that divider needs to be broken down and, and cleaned, you can do it. I'll watch you. I'll sit there and watch you. And if you do it to my satisfaction, I will agree that you're qualified. And from then on, I'll sign you if you're the senior person available. No way. No way, Ray. That's ridiculous. You have the ability to verify his qualification and his training. Now, you know, I'm not going to waste any more of my time or yours. Are you saying you're denying this grievance on the basis that James is not qualified to do the job? Yeah, I'm saying that the records don't show he's qualified, so I am denying the grievance. Well, you left us no choice but to write this into a formal grievance because you're in direct violation of our contract. Section 4, paragraph 8, which specifically says overtime will be awarded to the most senior qualified person. I'll have a written grievance on your desk before I leave here at 5 o'clock this afternoon. As you can see, handling a grievance properly is a real challenge. In the case you just observed, what did the steward do right in handling this grievance? Okay. Here are some questions to consider. Was the steward prepared? Did the steward take and keep control of the meeting? What was the tone of the meeting? Did the steward state the union's case clearly? Were the steward's arguments effective? Did the steward control the grievant? Did the steward stick to the point, or was she sidetracked? Did the steward respond to management's arguments effectively? What techniques of persuasion or settlement did the steward use? Do you think the steward handled the meeting effectively? The test of whether a steward handles a grievance effectively is not always whether it is resolved to the union's satisfaction at the first step meeting. Sometimes the grievance is taken through all steps before it is resolved. As a steward, you must be prepared for every possibility. Understanding and using the principles we've discussed will help you to help your co-workers, and that's what the grievance process is all about.